Hi, Internet. I'm Bob de Schutter. I'm a game designer and a professor of game design. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make games that people will absolutely love to play. Now, that's often easier said than done, but thankfully, there's a fail-proof method to accomplish this. It's called MDA. Um, so let me set the stage for you here. All right, so first off, let's give credit where credit is due. MDA is not something I came up with. It's an approach to game design that was originally written up in 2004 by Robin Hunica, Mark LeBlanc, and Robert Zubek. Now, these three people decided to start analyzing games through the lens of three distinct layers, the mechanics, the dynamics, and the aesthetics. Now, let's take a quick look at each, and to do so, I am literally going to use the first game I found in my partner's apartment as an example. I guess Battleship will have to do. However, as I do so, please remember that MDA works with every game or every game design that you can think of. So let's talk mechanics first. Mechanics are the rules and the components of the game. And in the case of Battleship, it's all the plastic you see in front of you here. It's the case, it's the little battleships, it's the, the, the water boards, it's the, the pegs, it's uh, the other pegs, um, and the rules, of course. And in case you've never seen the rules of Battleship before, here they are. So mechanics are actually pretty static, but once you start playing a game, all of that changes. The game rules and the player decisions start to interact with each other, and the game becomes more than the sum of its parts. It becomes a dynamic system. And that's what we mean when we talk about the dynamics of a game. Now for Battleship, this system will result in you not clustering your ships together, because then they become too easy to shoot for your opponent. You might optimize your firing patterns, trying to find your opponent's ships more effectively. Or maybe you try to read your opponent's facial expressions, hoping to find a tell. And that brings us to the final part of MDA. Because thanks to the dynamic system, we as players experience strong emotional responses while we're playing. Games can make us feel challenged, surprised, connected, scared, sad, epic. And those powerful emotions is what will make people fall in love with the games you design for them. Now, so far, we've mostly covered analysis. You now have a new vocabulary that you can use to analyze games with. Mechanics, dynamics, aesthetics. However, to design games, we still need to cover a couple more things. So, how do you design with MDA? Well, the trick is to use it backwards. So say this is you, the game designer, and this is your future player. When you go about designing a game, you want to apply MDA backwards, so that means starting with the aesthetics. Now, what kind of aesthetics, what kind of emotional responses would your player like when playing your game? If you're not sure about that, have a look at this list for inspiration. There are literally hundreds of emotions that a game can create for your players, so you just have to pick some and decide which ones your game will create. Next, think about what kind of dynamics, what kind of system you will need to accomplish those emotional responses. Say you want a game that feels dramatic, then how is your game's dynamic system going to make your players feel that drama? Maybe the system always ends in the heroes winning in the nick of time, or maybe the system results in many conflicts between important characters. In any case, it's up to you to decide what the dynamics of your game will be like, and once you've figured that out, you can turn that hypothetical system into little packs, components, rules, maybe even a video game, who knows? In any case, this is what MDA is all about. It's about thinking about the emotional response you want to elicit in your players, and then creating a game that actually leads to those emotional responses. And you might not get it right the first time. When you test your game for the first time, you'll probably learn that you failed miserably and that your players are not really feeling those desired aesthetic outcomes. And you know what? That's actually fine. In game design, you want to fail fast and you want to fail often. Because the quicker you can get those failures, the quicker you will get to the successes. And you can turn something like this into something that feels like this. Fire! Thanks for watching and have a lot of fun with MBA. Bye. <laughs>